What's up marketers? In today's video, we're going to go over the 10 ad creatives that all brands should test on Facebook ads. One of the most common questions I get is, do you have any easy creative wins? What type of creative should I run on my Facebook ads? And these are literally the 10 that we test on all onboarding clients at Thesis. Seriously, there's no gatekeeping here and there's no fluff. So let's go ahead and dive in. Number one is going to be a creative that you are very familiar with if you have watched my channel at all, which is the features point out ad. I have shown this type of ad several times in this channel channel also several times on my TikTok. But the reason why I show it so much is because it really does work. And the hack to getting this type of ad creative to work is you do need to do some creative strategy research and really focus on the core benefits for your users. Sure, you can go around and just point out the type of features, but if you can actually communicate the benefits in the way that your customers are talking and the way that they communicate, that is going to create a winning ad. Number two is a bit of a new one, but it is a statistic based ad. Now, there are a few different ways that you can incorporate statistics into your ads, and I definitely recommend that this is something that you try out because buying is largely an emotional process. People are going to buy your product based on emotions, based on how they feel. But I do think that you can get more people to convert by throwing in some statistics. This is essentially going to give their brain a logical reason to say yes. I see this work in several ways. You can do it as a simple image with the statistic front and center. And the real hack here for the statistic is if you can actually show the better life realized afterwards, like X amount of people got this result by using this product. I've also tested it by doing more generalized statistics like, oh, X amount of people have this type of problem. I haven't seen that work as well, but if you can tie your statistic to the end result that you want your users to have, that's when I tend to see it crush. I've also seen people try this as ad copy. So if you want to try a new piece of ad copy, then this is a really easy one to try out as well. Number three is another one that I've definitely talked about a lot on this channel, but I am going to give a little bit of a disclaimer. You might be asked to take it down. However, I'm not sure if you really should. And that is a press screenshot ad. Essentially what this looks like is this is going to look like a piece of press that has been published on a major public I've seen this work the best when you are actually using really big name publications. So think Forbes, think Cosmopolitan, think Vogue, those type of things. What I suggest here is that you don't just, you know, screenshot the article. I would actually suggest recreating this in Figma and highlighting the things that are most important for your users to understand. So maybe it's going to be an image of your product or service, and maybe you can also try testing out a few different types of headlines. Again, the publication might see it. They might ask you to take it down but nine times out of 10, they don't, but I have seen it happen a few times. So I'm just going to let you know that might be a possibility, <laughs> especially you Forbes. Number four is the problem solution UGC. Now I have shared my template for creating UGC scripts and this is literally what this is. This is gonna be a little bit of a longer piece of UGC content, but I've really seen that if you communicate the problem first and then present the product or service as the solution to that problem, that tends to generate winning ads again and again. If you're interested in learning more about this type of ad, I have a video that dives deep on it and also shows you many different scripts that I've seen that are winners. Also, if you're new to UGC, UGC or your brand is new to using UGC content, this is ideally where I would start you off at. And number five is the TikTok response hook. Now I've seen this work just as well on TikTok ads as I have on Facebook ads. And really the hack here to getting this right is you want to make sure that you're asking a frequently asked question that number one seems to already be being asked and number two feels really organic. So maybe add an emoji, maybe type in lower caps, but make it seem more organic because that's really what is going to stand out to people. And if you're eager to also do some split testing with your ad creative, I would go ahead and test out several different types of questions or comments that could be put in this TikTok response bubble. I've very often seen this type of ad associated with very high hook rates and conversion rates. Number six is what I like to call listicle style UGC. So of course we brought up the problem solution style UGC. That's really like the OG of user generated content, but I've been seeing a listicle style UGC working really, really well across many of our accounts. This is also one that I think is really fun for creators to make. So if you've already seen some traction out of UGC content, like the problem solution UGC that I had mentioned earlier in this video, this is probably the next one that I would try. And I think creators can have a lot of fun with this too. So if you are a creator yourself and you are trying to pitch brands, I would actually try pitching them either a problem solution one, a listicle one, or this next one right here. 
So number seven is also a type of user-generated content, which I consider to be tutorial-based or how-to content. Now I see this crush for beauty and skincare brands. And really this is like the epitome of a content first strategy. And what's so interesting is I've really seen that lately, this is the type of content that is really crushing it, not only on Facebook ads, but TikTok ads as well. So for beauty and skincare, you can obviously be associated with a skincare routine or a certain makeup routine. But if you think that there's actually something that your product or your genre or your niche can teach someone, I would go ahead and give it a try. I've even seen specific ads where they didn't even mention the brand or the product at all. And that ended up being the top performer because it was more of this educational based style content. So for me, this is really a must test in 2023 and something that we're really trying out on a lot more of our brands lately. Number eight is probably my favorite ad to run, which is a founder style ad. Now I have worked with brands and founders to create really big studio style founders ad storylines, but I've also seen this work just as well with UGC style content with founders. And really the reason why this works is because I think that founders are often the most uniquely suited to being able to clearly communicate their why and their ethos behind their brand or product they often most intimately know the problems associated that they are trying to solve. And they often have a very intimate and vulnerable storyline associated with that. I talked about this in my recent video that was all about the UGC ad styles that I see working right now, but personal history and personal storylines are something that I see working really well, especially if you're associating them with the hook. And I think this is often why problem solution ads work so well, because oftentimes people are talking about themselves um, and their problem and speaking in the eye. I've also found that like when founders can communicate that and like have that personal storyline, that is often what is really working here. So anytime that I have a founder that agrees to do this type of ad, I jump at the chance because it really does convert super well. This is also one of those ads that if you are a newbie business owner and you're new to Facebook ads and you don't know what type of creative to run, I would highly encourage trying a founder style storyline like this because you can go ahead and set up your iPhone and pretty much just tell your story and explain your why. And that has been very, very powerful, often resulting in great awareness, but also sales. Number nine is the before and after ad. Now I have actually done an entire video about this specific ad as well. And one of the most common things that I get is, Dara, you're not allowed to do before and after ads. Yes, you are. And there are so many clever ways that you can show before and after without actually saying before and after. But you can actually say the words before and after as long as you are not doing a weight loss product or showing a cosmetic procedure. Those are the things that are not allowed. But you can also show with this product, without this product, or you can even be more clever. So I am very tired of every time I bring up this ad, people clogging my DMs and people clogging up the comment section and be like, Dar, you're not allowed. You are definitely allowed. You know, just be a little bit more smart about it if you are that concerned. But this is honestly one of the most powerful types of not only ad type units, but also this is something that's really, really powerful to start off in the hook. So even if you are creating a type of UGC ad and you're, you know, doing a problem solution ad, or maybe you're doing a how-to content, try incorporating elements of this before and after to showcase, you know, really the impact that your product can have. It's very powerful and ad creative for a reason, because that's the whole reason people buy is for the end result. And number 10 is an us versus them ad. I still see this one kicking strong in 2023. It is oftentimes one of the more stylized or graphic types of ad creatives. And uh, you know, we've been able to test this as an image and, and as a GIF and as a short video and all of them tend to work pretty well. It's very interesting. I actually showcased this ad recently on my TikTok and I had a number of people reach out to me that said that they felt uncomfortable talking negatively about about the competition. Number one, very interesting. I only got this commentary from other women, which like, I don't know, draw your own conclusions. But number two, you don't have to directly call out a single specific competitor. You can also talk generally about the market. You can also talk generally about what types of issues and problems that people are up against and why they would choose a solution like theirs. It's interesting. I had some people say that, oh, this might be perceived as negative. And actually, I think that, you know, this idea of negativity or this idea of comparison is actually something very, very important to test 
test out in your ad creative. So I wouldn't write it off right away. Um, but if you have some thoughts about us versus them ads, please let me know in the comment section if uh, they make you nervous or if you think that they are actually too negative. I've never thought that way and I think it's actually a really interesting thing to test out in general on your Facebook ad. I'm, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus one because I've seen it working a lot recently but I haven't come up with a clever name for it. So I'm just gonna call them short videos and gifts. I've been seeing a lot more short videos working out recently to the tune of like three seconds, five seconds. So most gift style or boomerang in nature. Another element that these often have to make them so successful is they have value props in the form of bullet points or in sort of like a features point out sort of type of ad, I don't know. But I think this is another ad that's really easy for founders on a budget or anyone who's working for a brand that doesn't have that much ad creative. This is something that's so easy for you to create yourself or as the media buyer. If you're a media buyer, you shouldn't exactly be making the creative, and I know we've all been there. So this is something that I would pitch to a client or whatever if you see that they're really struggling to generate more creatives, and especially if you need them, which you likely do, because this is something that you know I've been able to turn around within like five, 10 minutes, and then quickly put some text overlay, some bullet points, and they've actually converted pretty well. So if you need some help with that, I hope that works out for you. And that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.